Dinner Master Herbalist here with Z Natural Foods and today's video topic is going to be about the area of self-reliance. Um, I should mention that I'm going to be doing a multi-part multi video where I'm going to be doing several videos on uh, two specific topics. One is self-reliance and one is simplicity. And then I'm going to do a third video on how they intermingle with one another and how you can't have one without the other. If you want to achieve true balance in your life and you want to live a healthy and thriving life. Okay, but today I'm going to hit on some of the simple points about self-reliance, why self-reliance is so important and why it's important for you to attempt to live your life as self-reliant as possible in order to fulfill uh, your or to succeed in health and balance. Okay, so let's begin with <clears throat> the fact that self-reliance in itself is perhaps one of the greatest gifts we can give to ourselves, okay? The feeling of not having to rely on others and the feeling of being able to understand that while you may not be able to, to do everything for yourself, that at least parts of the process in order to see the end result you want to see is something that you will be capable of doing. Again, this is going to be a process and you need to be extremely patient with this process because it's not something you're going to learn to do overnight. It takes years to be a truly self-reliant individual and to be quite honest, most people, will, you know, they may not ever reach that level of true self-reliance, but that's okay because... The process itself is going to be a great teaching tool for you, and more importantly, while some people may never reach that complete level of self-reliance, again, what you will learn is how to utilize the parts and the pieces in order to be a part of the process, and that's just as important as reaching that end goal, okay? Um, <clears throat> The good news is this, it's important to understand that you are capable of being able to deal with so many crises in your life, whether it's a health crisis, whether it's a functional crisis, whether it's, it really doesn't matter what the crisis is. You are more capable than you realize and this comes down to the fact that if you don't feel that you are, for whatever reason, capable, it's simply because you haven't educated yourself enough on that area, and more importantly, you haven't compiled enough information to be able to make a reasonable decision based on the information that's been provided to you. Most often, people rush into uh, making a decision because they haven't they haven't done their homework and they haven't been patient enough to do their homework in order to see what's out there and in order to make a logical and reasonable decision on a specific topic in order to help themselves. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is in order to be able to understand the idea of how self-reliant you can be, you need to be able to strengthen your coping skills. Now this in itself is going to be a separate video, but to just hit the high points of when you're dealing with coping, coping is more than just the physical aspect, um, which is otherwise known as adapting. Okay, Coping is also as much mental as it is physical. And when I speak of coping, I speak of your first reaction for when a crisis hits? Are you someone who panics? Are you someone who freaks out? We all do it, there's no shame in it, but coping is again a process that you need to learn how to deal with on multiple levels. And if each time something, each time a crisis hits you, if you become a little bit better at coping with it, over time you're going to be able to master the skill of coping. Okay, so that's really important and to, to understand. And again, I am going to do a separate video just on learning how to cope. 
okay? Because I think that this is something that's really important for people to be able to understand and more importantly to attempt to master, okay? And I'm going to go back to my original statement where I, where I explained to people, patience is going to be of the utmost importance throughout this entire process, okay? Um, the reason why, I should also mention this, the reason why it's so important to cope and to get better at coping, and that should be one of the first things that you attempt to learn, is because what this is going to do is it will minimize any further damage that could possibly happen from this specific crisis you're dealing with. So for example, let's just say whatever the crisis is, your your you uh, you know your your basement got flooded, okay? Now, you can freak out about the whole thing, which most people will do because it's our natural response to want to flip out about stuff like that. But here's the thing that you have to keep in mind, okay? If you learn to cope with it and you get better at coping, What's going to happen is this, when you freak out and when you go crazy over this, it's going to take away from your ability to be able to come to a resolution, okay? And that means longer, longer, a longer time that's going to go, that that basement's going to be sitting there with all that water in it, okay? By learning to cope and by learning to come to a resolution in a more efficient manner, it means the damage is going to be minimized, okay? So I think that's important to really understand up front, okay? Part of self-reliance is also being able to follow your gut instinct, okay? And again, I'm going to go into a separate video completely on gut instinct only because this is a concept in itself that needs to be fully explained. But um, your gut is one of your greatest tools in order to take you in the right direction. I'm not saying that your end result should be based solely on your gut instinct. It should be based on your instinct and it should be based on the information that you've compiled in order to make a logical and educated decision. But the gut will oftentimes teach us in which direction we should at least head in in order to be able to come to this proper conclusion. Okay? Part of being self-reliant is also understanding that you're not going to be able to learn everything on your own and that you are going to, up to a certain extent, need to be able to rely on people up to a certain extent, okay? So therefore, what I often suggest to people in their process of becoming more self-reliant is surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Because these like-minded people are going to be able to give you the ability. They're going to teach you as well as you're going to be able to teach them. So now you've, you've put together this wonderful community of people who aren't necessarily relying on each other, but are working off of one another and who can teach one another. And by learning more and by teaching others, you are in fact becoming more self-reliant. Okay? The final thing that I really want to hit on when, when it comes to these high points of self-reliance is the understanding of passing it forward. One of the things I always promised myself when I became a master herbalist is that anyone who ever needed my help and my time, I would always find the time to be able to help, educate, and at the very least push them in the right direction in order to become a healthier and a better person. And I'm a big believer in passing the information that you've learned forward. I think it's your duty and your responsibility as a human being to be able to pass information forward. Okay, guys, so this is the first video in the Self-Reliance Simplicity uh, series of videos, okay? I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.